Hey GP learners, so in this episode we're joined by Dustin Saint from Primary Care IT and we're going to walk you through um, Primary Care IT's platform to help you support you with delivering the consent part of the COVID vaccination to your patients, so whether that's in your practice or your network area or something even bigger than that. How are we doing today Dustin? Yeah, good thanks Andy, doing well. Cool, so I know you wanted to show us this um, really interesting kind of um, flow that you've got sorted to help practices manage the whole consent process, particularly when you know the COVID vax hits um, practices and networks and that kind of stuff. Um, I'm going to stick it on screen so you can talk us through it. Perfect, cool. Thanks ever so much, Gandhi. Yeah, we're really excited about this. So this is um, part of One Contact platform. So for those of you that have used the One Contact platform before, uh, this will look familiar. Um, and what we've done within the One Contact platform is build a COVID nineteen vaccine consent. Uh, data collection point. So if you're not signed up with One Contact already, you can go to onecontact.health um, and it will talk you through the sign up process. It's a very, very simple four page kind of sign in process for that. Um, and then that will allow you into this platform. And then if you want to use um, gov.uk notify to send text messages, there's a further stage to set up, but that will allow you to send up to 20,000 free text messages per year for your practice through this portal, which is definitely worth doing. Um, mm -hmm. So if you click on the, when you when you get into the portal, if you go to forms, and it'll take you to this page, you've got all the different forms that we've got available. So you've got the clinical calculators that you can send out to patients. You've got the disease reviews that you can send out to patients, uh, or you've got data collection. If you got, go to data collection and you've got the COVID-19 consent uh, vaccine, um, and that will allow you to send it either with our tool or if you've got Accurix, iPlato or MJog and you want to send it out via that platform, you can copy and paste that and post that into any other messaging service that you want to use. If you want to use the gov.uk notify system, um, you literally just pop in there the telephone numbers that you want to send it to. So if you're setting up clinics, we'd suggest that you do, we've got searches that you can use within the clinical systems to identify the patients who are in those clinics and then be able to extract the telephone numbers of those patients. You can then just paste those into this um, section here and then click on send, send invites. If you want to amend um, the text that you're sending out to your patients, you can do that here um, so that all of your patients receive the same information and then just click send invites and those invites will go out to the patient. When the patient gets the, the invite, it will come through and look like this. So COVID vaccine consent, really clear about what it is. Uh, if you want to watch a video about consent for the vaccine, you can click on that. Um, we'll see a familiar the face consent. there. Um, so we can watch that video if we want to. You can pop in your name uh, and your date of birth here. And then it asks you, are you filling the form in for yourself or for somebody else? So if I'm filling it in for myself, moves on to the next question. If it's for somebody else, it'll ask what's their name, what's their date of birth, and can you explain the relationship to them and the legal basis for providing consent? So is the person that you're completing this for a male or a female? Um, that's just so that we make sure that during the consent process, we highlight the importance of not getting pregnant or being pregnant um, for up to two months after the vaccine has been given. Uh, mm -hmm. Next. Uh, it just gives you a bit of spiel about the fact that you're due to have your vaccine soon. Uh, there's a link to the full patient information leaflet. If you click on that, it will take you to that. And then some text just to explain what the vaccine is and what it's used for. You can click next. We go through and there's just some practical information about how the vaccine is actually given and the fact that you need a second dose 21 days later and the fact that it may not be effective until seven days after the second vaccine. How safe is the vaccine? So there's some information about that. And then who shouldn't have the vaccine? So it's got information here um, from the um, summary uh, patient characteristics leaflet. And then if you want to see the actual constituents of the vaccine, they're listed there and you can click on that to expand that. Um, if the patient does have any concerns about the above information, they can record those there. If they don't, then they can simply move on to the next section. Um, then there's a section about side effects and it talks you through what the side effects are, which ones are very common, which ones are common and which ones are uncommon. And then this is the section for women um, and it asks you to confirm that you've understood the fact that you shouldn't get pregnant, that you're not pregnant and that you should delay any pregnancy for up to two months, for until two months after you've received the vaccine. And then a warning about driving and operating machinery. 
and then ask the patient to confirm that they've not had any anaphylaxis or severe allergies previously and then ask them if they consent to proceed with the vaccination. The patient clicks submit and that's it. It comes back into the one contact platform. Um, so if we go back into that, that will then populate through as a, um, as a report list and we can export those out as CSV files. We're just doing the internal work at the moment to be able to tag invites with particular times and particular dates that the patients are coming in for vaccination so that you should be able to then sort those CSV files that come back so that you can identify which patients are coming into which clinic dates. So hopefully that will help a little bit in terms of streamlining the consent process and making sure that patients are well informed when they attend. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think the key thing there is that you can allow the patient to do the consent before you actually uh, have them in the practice. And obviously the flow of patients can be a bit more challenging with the 50 minute wait time. So making sure you don't have people mulling around when you don't really need them. So hopefully having this as a mechanism to send to majority of our patients beforehand, just so they can get that done, signed, and then obviously or you fill in the consent, do you have any other questions? Yes, no, okay, let's crack on with the vaccine and, and hopefully sort out the flow a little, bit, a little bit easier. If people did want to sign up for One Contact, where would you suggest they go? Uh, if you just go to onecontact.health um, and the sign up will just um, is, is available there and you just take it through. Cool. Thank you for that, Dustin. I know that's been really useful and helpful. And I, I do recommend people have a look at this. I think it's going to help a lot in terms of what people are doing. Um, as always, each of you guys, we're here to try and help share more content and stuff for you. I know Dustin's done loads of work to try and do that, so do check out One Contact for other reasons as well. Don't just have to use your COVID consent. Um, and let us know what you think. As always, always keen to hear your comments and stuff. And uh, EJ Pilone is here to help save you your patient's time by taking on some primary care and learning. We'll catch you in the next episode. <laughs>